Okay, so a couple of days ago, I made a, a video about continuous integration and something that kind of goes hand in hand with continuous integration slash continuous deployment slash delivery is feature flags. Um, I wanted to just give a quick overview about feature flags. Um, I don't know what this site is, but you can go check this link out. I just want to have something up so we can kind of talk about this. But when you're doing continuous integration, I kind of talked about it before, but you have a bunch of people who are merging code into trunk. Uh, if you don't know what trunk is, basically when you're using Git, you usually have one branch that is like your centralized branch where all your code needs to be merged into. Some people use main. If you have a bigger project, you might use like a develop and a staging and a test uh, branch. And then finally you have a main branch. But the idea is that all these changes are coming in every day, multiple times a day, and they're getting merged into your trunk. So the issue with that is that you can't always deploy the latest version of trunk because you could have a bunch of features in it that are not yet done, right? You could have one pair of devs who are working on feature A, another pair of devs are working on feature B, and you can't just say, it, I'm going to deploy right now because some of those features might not be done. So one way to kind of prevent that issue is to use something called feature flags. They're also called feature toggles, where basically in your code base, you add some type of logic to determine when to hide or show certain buttons or pages in your UI. And then also certain API endpoints, you want to basically just throw some type of error if a user were tried to hit that endpoint. And the idea is you, you continuously deploy your code, right? So you might have an API endpoint that is half finished, deployed to production, but no one can actually invoke it because the feature flag is checked when someone tries to hit your API endpoint. And it's going to just throw an error back to the user saying, hey, this is a, you know, an endpoint that's a work in progress. So that's kind of like the idea of a feature flag is that all of these flags, typically there's a a database or a place that you have all these flags listed out. And the key to having feature flags is you do not want to have to do a redeployment to turn these features on and off, right? You have a centralized database or some type of cache or whatever, some location where a developer or a product owner can come in and just turn on the feature flag at any point in time or turn it off at any point in time. And this has a lot of benefits. And I was going to kind of read through some of these and explain what the benefits are. So testing in production, depending on how sophisticated your feature flags are, you could potentially have feature flags that only work for certain users, right? So you could have like a, a set of test users who have like a role of testing. And when the feature flag is turned on, only those test users have access to the feature. And you could have this working in production, right? You could have your test users come in, start using the feature in production, you can watch them to see how it works, take notes, and then turn the feature flag off and go back and kind of fix up some things if it didn't work the way you thought it would. So that's one potential way that you can do it. Another one is canary releases. So if you don't know what a canary release is, it's basically a way to release your new features to a small subset of users, right? So for example, one, two, 5% of users, and you can use feature flags to basically turn on a certain feature for a subset of users. And if your code is sophisticated enough where you have monitoring set up that you can see when errors are happening, what you can do is you can turn on the feature for 5%, watch your logs, and if you see a bunch of errors start happening, you could basically just turn that feature flag back off and say, okay, there's obviously a bug with this feature flag or this feature, let's not turn it on in production. And the more sophisticated your CI pipeline is, you can actually just like turn it on for a little bit. You could have a system monitor the logs over a 30 minute or an hour period to make sure that nothing critical is going wrong with this feature. And then you can slowly start increasing the amount of users who are able to use this feature, right? So you can go from 5% to like 20%, 50%. And then at some point, if you don't see any critical errors happening for all your users, you just turn the feature completely on for all users. And that can help you mitigate risks for deployments. Now, again, a lot of this stuff is a lot easier said than done, right? The, the engineering that has to go in to set up like canary releases and all this other stuff, uh, like AB, AB testing, there might be like tooling that kind of does this all for you, but if you're going to roll your own solution, it's, it's easier said than done. Right. Okay. So they say quicker release cycles. Um, so this basically is, is allowing you to, again, like at any point developers can push code and get that code deployed, whether the code is completely done or not in hundred percent tested and vetted, it could just be off on your production environment, but the code is still there. So it kind of really bolsters the continuous integration uh, mindset so that all your code and features are integrated as often as possible and as quick as possible. Uh, this is one that we actually do a lot in our work. 
we once had a feature where we deployed it and we noticed that when a bunch of people started hitting the endpoint at the same time, it would actually bring our entire cluster down to like a complete halt. So that's something that we just kind of overlooked when we did our load testing. Or we didn't really think about like, okay, what if a bunch of users hit this endpoint at the same time? Because this endpoint's actually doing a bunch of stuff under the hood. We're not doing like the right scaling. And obviously like, you know, adding some type of API limiting, some IP limiting would help resolve that issue. But what a feature flag would have helped with is if you have these different features behind feature toggles, we could have just turned off the feature, right? Unfortunately, at the time, I don't know if this was even behind a feature flag. So we had to basically go into the code, comment some stuff out, do another deployment that took some time. And then finally that API endpoint was basically just turned off and no one could ever hit it to potentially bring down um, some parts of our system. I think we caught this on a testing environment, so it's not as serious as I'm making it sound like. But again, a feature flag allows you to turn off features if for whatever reason there's a big issue with the feature, whether you, there's something you didn't account for when you're trying to design the implementation and you just need to turn it off and go back to the drawing board and try to figure out how to fix it. So A-B testing is basically you have, for example, a landing page. And you want half the users to see the landing page with a certain design, and you want the other half of users to see the landing page with another design. And so what A-B testing allows you to do is you can say, hey, does the design for site A, do people tend to sign up more when they see this design over design B? Okay, and so you kind of like let that run for like a certain amount of time, maybe it's like a week or two, and you collect analytics on it. You see how many people registered, or signed up based on these different designs or how many people were less or more confused based on these different designs. And once you get the information, you could basically either just switch everything to feature A, or switch everything to feature B or something like that. But it's really just about getting feedback on your feature before you like just force everyone to use it. Um, and there's ways to scope it so that like based, you could do like a hash on the person's email or a hash on the person's username. And if they fall into a certain bucket, then the feature is going to be on for them for always after a certain point. Um, that's how you can basically make it so the person, the same person with the same email continues to see the same feature live. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, feature gating. I haven't really heard of feature gating before, but I guess it's more of like you only want this feature to be available to a subset of your users. And then over time you start um, rolling it out to more feet, more users. So like, let's say you have like a, a, a tiered system where you have like high paying customers, you have standard customers and you have free Let's say you want to give this feature to all of your highest paying tier customers first, and then make sure that you get the feedback from them first. And then you start rolling out to others. I did talk about this kind of at the beginning where you don't have to do a completely new deployment to turn a feature on or off. Like all the code is already there in production. It's just a matter of turning on a toggle and then all your users could potentially see it. So it really helps with the whole continuous integration, continuous deployment. If that's something that your team is, uh, interested in. Now I will say that a lot of the stuff like you don't have to do, like, I don't think I've ever done AB testing, um, at work before, like on any of my work projects, mainly because we don't work on projects that are like open to the public. So there's no point to like seeing, uh, you know, how does one landing page compare to the other? A lot of the times you just, we can sit with our users directly and just ask them for feedback. Implementing this stuff would just take more time. Um, so we never really did it. The rollback kill switch, super important, um, I would say. We don't do canary releases. We just go ahead and just release stuff under a feature toggle, and then we turn it on when we want users to use it. So again, like how do you implement this? I'll try to do some type of like pseudocode, but depending on where you want the feature to be. So for example, let's say we are on an express server or something, and you want basically an endpoint called like, I don't know, users. So let's say you're adding a new feature to allow users to fetch all the users in the system or something. I don't know, I'm just doing some pseudocode here. But basically here, you would basically say if get feature flag, and then I would say like um, fetch all users or something like this. Um, now behind the scenes, this thing could potentially be an asynchronous function that does a database call, or this could be some type of Boolean that's cached locally for five minutes depending on how, how much you want to cache this thing. You don't want this to like hit your database every single request. Um, but in some cases, if someone needs a kill switch to happen instantly, then maybe you don't want to cache anything. But the idea is like you run some code to check if a feature flag is on. 
And if it's not, like if I just say like, if this thing is not on like this, in fact, this, this code looks ugly. Um, cost is enabled. How about this? We'll do this, we'll make it equal to that. And then I'll say, if it's not enabled, you know, you could just return res dot, go ahead and add rec and res up here. I could say res dot status of, I don't know, 400 or 404, um, and then send feature not turned on, something like that. So that's the idea for like an API endpoint behind a feature flag. You have some type of logic that fetches from some type of database or some API or somewhere. And this thing can dynamically be changed from another dashboard to be either on or off. Or you can just go into the database manually if you're a developer and just turn it from true to false or false to true. And then all of your API endpoints, like even if you're deploying this thing to like a distributed cluster of machines, all of them are going to eventually grab a new version of the feature flag and then stop allowing users to hit this endpoint. Or vice versa, you could turn it on and then after a certain point, depending on if you're using caching or not, all your users will have access to the endpoint. So this also applies to the front end. I mean, like what you'd probably do is you'd have some type of component. So let's assume we're using like React here. And it depends again, how like live do you want this stuff to update? You could have some type of hook called like use features. And you could have some type of, I don't know, interval. Again, this is like pseudocode, so like don't call me out if I write something bad. Set interval. Um, let's just do this. We'll say every, every uh, 30 seconds, we're going to fetch the feature flags. Okay, and then what we could do is we can make, it like an, make an API request here. So like I'll do like a fetch request to get features from somewhere. This could be like your own API endpoint if you wanted to. I could say fetch, I don't know, features like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we could probably say like features, set features here with the use state. That could be like an empty object to begin with. So everything is turned off or you could default this to something. And then when you get your features back, let's just do a response on JSON, then set features. So I know this is like super pseudocode, but again, like you'd have your component here and then I could just basically say, I'm going to use that custom hook, use features. That's going to do a request to the backend every 30 seconds to see which features are on or off. And then I could basically hide or show components based on those features, right? So like, let's say there's a button here and I only want to show it, uh, fetch all users flag is on. Okay. So like assuming that there's an API endpoint that returns an object that has fetch all users, I could just do this. And then if it's turned on, I could show a button in the front end like this. So that's kind of the idea. So on the front end, in the back end, in various places in your code base, you'd have some way to basically check if feature, feature flags are on or not. And you can hide different things in the front end and turn different API endpoints on and off in the back end, or have different branches of logic execute. If let's say the feature was adding an extension to an existing API endpoint, for example, like let's say you need to come in and add logic to have an API endpoint start creating PDFs and upload those somewhere. You could wrap that additional logic with an if statement that checks to see if that feature flag is on. And then at some point when people start executing the API endpoint, and that's about it. I know this code is like red because I have a bunch of pseudocode and bad code, but I hope that was kind of a good overview of how you could potentially do it in, for example, like your front end with React components or your back end with your API endpoints. That's just kind of like a you know, a little teaser of how you could potentially do it. It gets a little bit more complicated if you have a lot more code uh, changes. If you guys enjoyed watching this overview, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to find a place to hang out with some other developers and just ask questions. The Discord channel is in the description link below. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.